Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here to get started this evening. I would like to recognize a few town folk um, behind the scene personnel. Please stand and remain standing as I recognize each uh, one of you, and please save your applause to the end. Uh, Miss Lisa Penland. Miss Lisa is our postmaster for Honey Path, and we will talk about her in more detail later. I tell you, she's uh, worked well with the with the town here, and uh, really saved us a lot of money and made it where we was able to do a lot of the things that we've been able to accomplish this um, this year. Uh, Mr. Al Young, he is. Um, chairman or was chairman of the Watkins Community Center graciously let us use this venue today uh, for this address. I want to make sure we recognize uh, Mr. Matt McCullough, our utilities director um, over in water and sewer, trash pickup, uh, roadside debris and limbs and, and whatnot. Uh, Chief Smith over our fire and EMS um, Again, we'll be talking about all these people again here shortly. Um, uh, Ms. Marcia Smith, she's also um, part of our zoning and ordinance uh, coordinator, and uh, we're thankful she stepped up and she does that duty free of charge. Uh, Ms. Beverly Crawford, which is our town clerk treasurer, uh, she uh, handles payroll and keeps me straight most of the time. Um, most of our council members are here. Um, Senator Honorable Mike Gambrell is with us this evening. Appreciate the work he does from a state standpoint. Uh, they've been gracious, helping, helping the town of Honey Path uh, accomplish a lot of things um, we've been able to accomplish. Uh, got a text message from Miss Cindy Wilson just maybe 10 minutes ago uh, stating she was running behind, so she will be here shortly. We look forward to Seeing her to financial guru back in the back there, William Hall. He uh, he handles all the town's money. Um, I think he just bought him a new Mercedes. I'm not sure, but uh, airplane. <laughs> airplane. We're gonna go fly together. Uh, Councilman Sullivan in the back. He's our Ward One representative. Um, Mr. Jim Taylor, our Ward Six representative. Ms. Jean Parrott, she is our Ward 3 representative. Ms. Rebecca Robinson, she is our Ward 4 representative. Ms. Dot Evans behind the camera, I couldn't see her. She is our Ward um, 5 representative. Chief Bozeman, Chief of the Police Department. Okay, worked well with him all, all during the last year. Uh, it's been a, been a pleasure of mine as well. Mr. Tim Pace, Tim Pace is our rec director. Working well with him as well. Uh, glad you all could make it. Anyone else here work for the town? Dan Bratcher. Yeah, Ms. Bratcher, would you please stand as well? She is our um, grants writer that we've recently hired. Anyone else work for town? Captain Morris, would you please stand? Recognize Elder as well. Captain Elder in the back. Let's give these people a big round of applause, please. When I planned this address, I didn't take into consideration that the fact that our Anderson School District 2 board members that were recently elected would be sworn in tonight. So I would like to take the time to congratulate Mason Gary, Gene Clint Scales, and Phil Ashley as they uh, swear into office tonight. Um, Sam Gimmer will be carrying that live. That's uh, why he couldn't be with us tonight. But congratulations. I'd also like to congratulate Rocky Burris, Burgess, uh, Mayor-elect of Williamston, uh, and Scott Horn, Mayor-elect of Ware Shoals. I hope to be meeting with Mayor Horn as soon as possible to discuss the sewer situations we share with Ware Shoals. As most of you know, I teach college. I'm a mechatronics instructor at Greenville Technical College in Greenville. And the key word I always tell my students when they start their journey in this field is persistence. Persistence is the key. 
Just over a year ago, I was very persistent in getting my plans out there to the citizens of Honeypath. And here's a few things that I talked about as I was going from house to house meeting a lot of the citizens in Honeypath. Revitalization of downtown, lower crime through policies and training in the police department, cleaning up the Shikola Mill site, incorporating a cooperative drug policing policy, and cleaning up the town in general. I'm proud to say that in the month of August, thanks to council's approval, we removed roughly four million pounds of asbestos and lead tainting debris from the Shikola Mill site. Through conversations with DHEC, the EPA, Anderson County, and several other agencies, we were able to not only move these piles for testing, but actually load them onto town trucks and remove them completely from the town of Honeypath. With three years to go in my administration, I believe that we can finish this project or at least have 90% of the, the debris removed. In the future, I'll be trying to acquire grants and DHEC monies to remove more of the debris from the mill site. The future of our mill site lays in the hands of Honeypath and no one else. If and when the plans from the past administration come to fruition, we will gladly welcome them and give Mayor My uh, Lawless Myers all the credit for that since he set that in motion. Looking forward to working with Mr. Self as soon as possible. Until then, we must go forward to clean up the site ourselves and not rely on someone else that may or may not take over the mill site. During my campaign a year ago, one of the things I said I would do is change a lot within the police department. Many people asked me what I was going to change. I said I wanted to make the police department function better and more efficiently and how I would do this through training and other avenues. Unfortunately, the training between the years 2017 and 2019 had a total of 96 man hours of training. Now I'm happy to announce that since I was elected, the police department under Chief Bozeman's leadership has a total of 2,400 hours of, of training within our police department. Would have had a lot more if it was not for the COVID-19 pandemic that hit us within the last year. And I want to make sure everyone knows that our K-9 unit attributed to a lot of that training as well. I came into office short of a police chief. I immediately appointed Sean Bozeman as interim, then soon after appointed him as chief. And I believe the citizens of Honeypath will agree with me that this was the best decision I could have made. Under Chief Bozeman's leadership, he appointed two captains, Captain Elder and Captain Morse. We were able to put on, promote, and pay for donated, with donated funds, a week-long children's day camp where they learned about police issues, met our two K-9 units, Echo and Riggs. They were able to swim in the pool and enjoy the bounce houses. Each day, snacks and lunch were provided by the town of Honeypath's churches and citizens with no funds directly taken out of the budget for the town. Honeypath Police Department put on an adult police camp where citizens were able to learn about police duties, responsibilities, and many other things, drug seizures and investigations as well. With the help of counsel and under the leadership of Chief, Bo Chief Bozeman, we were able to procure two K-9 units. Riggs is now certified in five drug sniffing abilities and is well on his way to becoming an apprehension dog as well. Most of the funds surrounding the K-9 units were donated as the police officers had shirt sales and fundraisers. Again, most of the funds for these K-9 units come from citizens donating and not out of the town's budget. This says a lot for our citizens of Honeypath and the fact that they will come together to help the town because we're all in this together. Here are some numbers from the Honeypath Police Department from the past year. The amount of drugs seized including meth, marijuana, pills, heroin, and cocaine totaled 960 grams. Compared to the drug seizures in the year dating November 2018 through 2019, equal to 110 grams. In the last year, we had 382 arrests, 
The previous time period the year before equaled 230. Traffic tickets the last year totaled 490 and the year before 880. Yes, I realize that's a whopsided uh, tickets. We'll get to that in a minute. The past year we equaled 477 warnings and the year before that there were 377 warnings. This does not translate into more accidents because the records showed that our accident rate for the fiscal year 2019 through 2020 have cut in half. As you can see under Chief Bozeman's leadership, our drug seizures have gone up tremendously. Our warnings and arrests have also gone up tremendously. And I directly relate that to the work that the officers are doing. Not that drugs and crimes have increased, but the police are actually doing better and more work now. I directly relate that to Chief Bozeman's leadership and his ability to see good quality officers. At this point, our police department is fully staffed and that is the first time this has happened in at least a decade. All of our citizens, all of our officers, excuse me, also have take-home vehicles. This is a first for Honey Path. This actually reduces costs by not running police vehicles 24 hours a day. It also builds morale for our police department and attracts better officers to our town. Under Chief Bozeman's leadership, we were able to unlock the front door of the police department for walk-ins. Something that I was told could never be done when I was running for mayor. So let's talk about that a minute. Let me show you how easy it was to unlock the front door of the police department for walk-ins. First and foremost, Chief Bozeman hired someone to come and build a wall so we would have a lobby with a window that was already there for our records clerk. The only other thing he needed to do was securely lock the evidence being downstairs. That's it. I think it cost the town roughly $400 to open the front door of the police department. Under Chief Bozeman's leadership, we're also able to hold the first town-wide joint emergency service training exercise which included the fire department and EMS under Chief Smith's leadership. From all accounts, that went very well and has uh, really helped the town better serve you and be prepared in case of an emergency. One of the things I campaigned for when I was running for mayor was changing the uniforms at the Honeypad Police Department. The reason I ran on this is that while I was out talking with citizens, the overwhelming thing I kept hearing is that we are tired of seeing our officers in riot gear or fatigues. In the last year, we have fully clothed our officers in the blue uniforms with white shirts at sometimes. Okay. And I've heard only great comments about the way our officers look now. I firmly believe that most of the citizen honey path will agree with me when I say our police department is the best it's been in quite a while and they look the best as well. Currently, the Honey Path Police Department has 14 officers and one records clerk. Under Chief Smith's leadership, in the last 20 years, we have taken our fire department from a level eight ISO rating down to a two. One's the best you can get, just in case y'all didn't realize. This greatly re reduces your insurance burden. We have sustained this ISO two rating of two for several years. Our fire and EMS had 589 classes totaling 2,424 man hours of training this year. The fire and EMS department has installed 122 smoke detectors in citizens' homes this year. They have inspected 190 businesses for fire codes and 86 residences. Businesses sometimes do not like these inspections but it ensures the safety of the workers and the patrons of the business as well as their property investment and investments. Within the last year, Council and I were able to procure the funds to purchase a new ambulance, a much needed vehicle for the fire and EMS. I feel safer because of Chief Smith and the Honey Path Fire and EMS, and I am personally thankful. The Fire and EMS Department has responded to the following calls, November 1st, 2019 through 2000, November 1st, 2020. 20 building fires, 23 grass fires, 1,801 emergency calls, 
3,817 non-emergency EMS calls. 1,376 medical calls. 79 service calls. 46 hazardous condition calls. 82 false alarms. 92 vehicle fire or motor vehicle accident calls. 55 good intent. And that's totaling, that totals 1,773 total calls for the fire department and 3,817 total calls for the EMS only department. Of the calls, there was a 404,525 property at risk fire. Property fire loss during that time period was $61,525. The Honey Path Police Department has saved $343,000 worth of property in the last year. Average on scene time is 2 minutes and 38 seconds, one of the best in the state. Something that kept coming to me over and over and over while I was campaigning for mayor was why do we need so many vehicles? Okay. Why do we have a ladder truck? Why do we have this? Why do we spend so much money on fire and EMS? Well, let me tell you. Engine 1 is a 2019. It has 5,490 5, miles on it. Okay. That's mileage, not run time. Okay. When that fire truck pulls up to a, a fire, it runs. And pumpers have to run and, and whatnot. Engine 2 is a 1995, it has 29,202 miles on it. Engine 3 is a 1997, it has 111,000 miles on it. Engine 4 is a 2003, it has 27,743 miles on it. The Quint is a 2009, it has 18,647 miles. I don't sound like a lot of miles, but when you consider these trucks are extremely heavy, especially when they're hauling water, that it takes a, a burden on these vehicles. Our Medic 3.0 is a 2019. It has 11,000 miles on it. Our Medic 3.1 is a 2007. It has 232,000 miles on it. Medic 3.2, 2014, 84,000 miles. Medic 3.3 is a 2006. It has 206,000 miles on this vehicle. And Medic 3.4 is a 2008. It has 269,500 miles. Truck 1 in the fire department of 2013 has 8,000 miles. Truck 2 is a 1985 fire truck. It has 24,688 miles on it. Car 1 is a 2011. It has 57,000 miles. And Medic 3.5 is a 2004 and it has 200,000 miles on it. I tell you all that to say most of our vehicles are getting to the point where they're becoming wore out. Okay. Um, ISO requires three engines for the town, two front lines and one reserve. One reserve engine to meet the base fire flow of 2,500 gallons per minute. That includes E1, E2, and E4. ISO requires a ladder, a ladder truck if there are over three buildings that are 35 or more feet from the ground to the peak of the roof or more than 10,000 feet under one roof. There are 75 su such structures in our town. Engine 3 serves as the rescue and service truck carrying jaws of life and other rescue tool tools and also has a full complement of fire equipment which can be used when needed for fire suppression. Truck 1 is a reserve rescue truck and is used for off-road calls such as grass fires. Truck 2 is a light truck equipped with a large generator. We have three ALS ambulances are needed for reserve capacity in case of mechanical problems or if needed for calls. If one of the BLS ambulances is out of service or if there are more calls than can be handled with the three BLS ambulances. The department has an ISO rating of two again, which puts the department in the top 5% of fire departments in the United States of America, not just the state. Besides the money that is saved on fire insurance, the citizens enjoy a safer community. 
In the latest ISO grade, the town missed an ISO class one by two pin points. And this is now being reviewed. For those that don't know, the fire and EMS departments in Honeypath have 12 full-time employees, as well as 40 part-time employees. <laughs> Rec Director Tim Pace has done an outstanding job with our youth during this COVID-19 pandemic. Although many of the spring sports were shortened or canceled, we were able to have some semblance of a sports season this fall. I do recognize many of the citizens of Honeypath had issues with the fees and the monies and how we chose to handle the spring sports funds that were received. Because of concerns and questions on Facebook, Mr. Pace and I held a meeting for the town to show up so we could address their concerns instead of on social media. Only one coach showed up, so we assumed that the citizens, although may be were, maybe were unhappy ex exactly with what was done, they were not disgruntled enough to come in and address the issue. On average, spring sports, baseball and girls softball teams consist of 150 to 200 participants. Fall sports includes cheer, football and soccer and average 100 to 120 participants. Our baseball field, the one used for 8 and under and 10 and under, is in the process of being laser graded to fix field issues. This has been handled through a grant that Director Pace was able to acquire. It will be done before the spring of 2021. Other grants are also being worked on to help fix our other fields, including the girls softball field behind the Watkins Center here. Honeypath soccer teams will now have home games beginning in 2019 played on baseball field three. Fall 2020 athletic programs are staying safe and doing well despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Honeypath Chicola, Chicola Pool brings in fifteen dollars to $19,000 average per summer, June through August. This year we were able to extend the pool closing in, until September due to schools being less than full capacity at the beginning. Plus we were able to accommodate daycares that use the pool. Speaking of daycares, we have daycares that come from Honeypath, Hickory Tavern, as well as Anderson to use our pool. This summer, pool staff had to save a patron that became unconscious underwater. Lifeguard training techniques and CPR were performed. The patron made a full recovery and I would like to personally thank all the lifeguards for their due diligence in training as well as being able to act in stressful situations. The hot shots of Honeypath, Honeypath Craft Studio, Boy Scouts of Honeypath and workout programs all meet in the rec center buildings regularly. This has worked out quite well for the patrons and those performing these activities. As always, we encourage safe practice with all our programs to help ensure safety through this COVID-19 pandemic. Again, a big thanks to Rec Director Tim Pace and Assistant Director Hunter Pace. Our maintenance department, led by Director Matt McCullers, is doing a great job as well. Just some numbers to go over first. I want the citizens to know that in the last year, the town has hauled off 355 loads of household items and junk set out by the road. The maintenance department has hauled off 494 loads of yard debris, which includes limbs and trees and leaves, of course. The town maintenance department has hauled off 46 loads of yard debris from our staging location. So let me explain exactly what that means for a minute. When we pick up yard debris from someone's yard, we dump it over. This includes trees and only, not trash or whatever. We have a staging area over at the police shooting range where we stage all of this until we get a big pile and then we load it up and take it to the landfill. Each one of these loads equals 30 to 40 car cubic yards of debris. Of the four million pounds of debris hauled off from the mill site, the town of Honeypath was responsible for 100 tons of this to the landfill. During the last year, we repaired 42 water leaks, answered 510 calls from City Hall, and changed 152 meters to the radio read type. In my campaign, I promised to try and clean up the town of Honeypath. 
So I suggested we start loaning out our trucks and trailers over the weekend and through the week to citizens to put their yard debris and our household items into a truck themselves and we, could, we would haul it off. I am very pleased to announce that this is working very well. And when I took office, the calls I was getting stated that when are they coming to pick up my junk or trash off the side of the road? It's been sitting out here for three months. Most recently, after implementing this policy, I've been getting calls have gone more like this. Mayor Burton, I've had household items sitting on my sidewalk for two weeks. When are they coming to get it? This is a win for the town. When you can cut down the complaints from three months to two weeks, I feel like you will all agree with me that this idea is working and accomplish what we set out to accomplish. I would like to remind everyone that in the last 20 years, Director McCullough's staff has dwindled from 24 full-time employees to 15 employees, with several of them being part-time. The average age of maintenance equipment is nine years old. Let me expound a minute on the idea, where the idea came from for lending out trucks and trailers. Back in June, I asked Matt to round up some volunteers for a Saturday, and I would come work with them eight, nine hours, and we cleaned up as much as we could that day. I think we hauled off about 20 truckloads that one day between yard debris and trash. The next morning, I rode town, as I often do through the week. Some of the same roads we went down the Saturday before that Monday and cleaned looked exactly the same before we ever touched them on Saturday morning. It's almost impossible to keep up with that kind of outpouring of trash and yard debris. I understand that people was home and wanting to do spring cleaning because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But it's a whole lot easier and quicker if uh, all we have to do is take the trailer or truck and dump it. Our town hall is managed by Ms. Beverly Crawford. She is our clerk treasurer. In the past year, we have established the need for an assistant to the mayor. Mayor's Leslie Walker has done a fantastic job for me. We now have a monthly newsletter that she is in charge of. We have a new website that she updates regularly. And this was a must for our town and now citizens are able to pay their water bill through, online through our website. Ms. Walker also keeps my calendar and schedules appointments with the citizens as well as our department heads. She schedules where our trucks and trailers are and who has borrowed them. She manages all this in addition to her clerk duties. We've added a new employee into the town hall as an assistant clerk and soon I hope we will be discontinuing the card type water bills and printing them on the back of the newsletter. To reiterate, a few of my goals for the next three years, have our K-9 unit rigs along with Alton Davis trained and certified as a full K-9 police unit. Continue the work with Echo and Chance Pace. Continue with the children's camp and the adult seminar. And as always, reduce crime, reduce drugs, and reduce speeders. I look forward to working with Chief Smith very closely and his group of great employees to accomplish an ISO rating of one for the fire and EMS. Continue to work they're doing with inspection and inspections and installing smoke detectors in residents as well as providing a service for our safety and potential fire hazards. Through our maintenance department and hopefully funds from DHEC and EPA or other grants, continue the cleanup at Chicola Mill. I would like to see all the uh, demolished debris removed and then we can look at start working on the standing structures. Due to the history of the Chicola plan, I would like to take the statue out front down and store it until something is made on that site, at which time we will place it back in a prominent location. I would like to get the town to a point where yard debris and household items sit on the road no more than a week. I would like to see Director Pace have a working budget of his own. This will untie his hands some and allow him to purchase much needed supplies and equipment without coming to council and asking for everything he needs. Town Hall really needs an updated system for accounts receivable, billing, and new software for the water department. We will be looking into these upgrades in the near future. 
I am in talks with several in investors about filling the old Fred's building. Several other properties in Honeypath are also on the agenda for the next few years. I'm hoping in the next three years that we will be able to reduce the burden on the taxpayers of Honeypath through growth and supply better services, less taxes, and cheaper water bills and fees. The town is, a, the town is in decent shape financially. We are not full of money, but we have yet to borrow any. So we are holding steady. A few things that I have that have not been announced, William Hall and I have recently re renegotiated some interest rates on a couple of loans, which will hopefully save the town of Honeypath six to eight thousand dollars a year. Starting in March and since we have not implemented any sewer surcharge, which is the money added to your water bill when there is a lot of rain and infiltration into the sewer systems that we send to our souls to be treated. Downtown is starting to come alive with several of the buildings being bought recently and plans to open up more businesses. Along with council, we are able to work out an agreement with some investors to procure the old shirt plant. And if you haven't noticed, it is being cleaned up around there recently and hopefully within a few years that will be a great asset to the town. Not only from an eyesore standpoint, but also as a valuable value to the community. Now I would like to read an email I received from Jim and Stephanie Covan about the plans with several properties they have purchased. Mayor Burton, this letter email serves to provide you and the town an update on our progress at the old mill site, as well as some insight on things we are working on to help bring some revitalization to our town. As you are aware, as you are aware, we acquired the mill property from the town that adjoins the mill we had pre previously purchased several years ago. They're talking about the old shirt plant here, not Shakola. We'll make sure that's clear. Since that time, we have also purchased additional adjoining properties. We have already began extensive cleanup efforts inside as well as around these areas. We have acquired assistance from two different architectural firms to come up with a plan that would embody all of these properties. At this time, the plans are not finalized, so we cannot provide an exact detail of what may go in this space. But please know we are working diligently to come up with something that will provide life to our town. As an aside, we have also recently purchased several residential properties that we have made improvements on. One of these was located just outside of town, and three are in the city limits. Two of these four have been completely re renovated and now have new homeowners. And the other two are being renovated into forever homes for some new families. We have also purchased property that runs behind Wildwood Apartments as well as behind Sham Shamrock Apartments. While the property is not located within the city limits, we thought we would also provide insight into the cleanup process. We have completed the process of clear cutting and all that remains is stump removal. At this time, there are no future plans for the, for the site other than cleanup itself. We appreciate the cooperation from you and the town and as we move forward to make improvements in our town. Sincerely, Jim and Stephanie Coban. One of the things I hadn't mentioned I want to hit on is our newsletter. If not for the Honeypath United States Postal Service, although they do not work for the town, they're a federal entity, they have come out and really helped us out a lot, and I want to really thank them for that. Um, back in the spring, Ms. Penland came to me and brought a stamp for the town uh, for the postage, a stamp for the postage, and was able to reduce the cost of mailing the water bills inside a newsletter to the same cost as the postcard itself. So that's, thank you so much. It meant a lot. There's a lot more work that needs to be done in Honeypath, and as previous administrations have seen and pointed out to me many times, these tasks do not come easy or cheaply. Thank you all for coming out this evening. I hope I've been able to shed some light on things happening in our town and where we stand as a community and what the future goals are. At this time, I will take a few questions, if any. Thank you very much for being here.